Hello and welcome at Tech and Just Virtual Tutor Channel. Today in this tutorial of biology, we will talk about biogenesis and abiogenesis. So let us start this tutorial firstly by understanding the origination of these two words and then later we will discuss about the concept as well as biogenesis versus abiogenesis. Okay? Alright, the term biogenesis was first used by Henry Charles Bessian. Henry Charles was an English physiologist and neurologist. He had graduated in the year 1861 from the University of London and then he took fellowship of Royal Society in the year 1868. He used the term biogenesis to mean the generation of life from non-living materials. Here keep this point in mind that the meaning for biogenesis in the beginning was that generation of life from non-living materials. And the reason behind this meaning was that Henry Charles had witnessed the spontaneous generation of living organisms out of non-living matter under his microscope. So this was the first time that the word biogenesis was ever used. However, another biologist by the name of Thomas Henry Huxley, who was also an English biologist, he termed biogenesis as formation of life from life. Now, you understand that first biogenesis was meant as generation of life from non-living materials, but after the review, the meanings of biogenesis were changed from generation of life from non-living materials to formation of life from life. Now, Thomas Henry Huxley he chose to call formation of life from non-living materials as abiogenesis, which also means spontaneous generation. Now, with all this information, you can understand that in modern biology, the word biogenesis means formation of life from life and the word abiogenesis means spontaneous generation, which actually means that generation of life from non-living materials with the passage of time. Now, if we look into history, it was the belief of ancient Greek that goddess Gaia, who is also known as Mother Earth, could make life arise spontaneously from stones. It is a process which is known as generatio spontanea. Now, Aristotle, who was also a Greek philosopher, he disagreed with this process. And instead, he stated his belief that generatio spontanea could be that creatures arise either from dissimilar organisms or from soil. So, this was the early concept about spontaneous generation. But you keep in mind that the word abiogenesis did not exist and only the term generatio spontanea was being used. Whereas the word abiogenesis was originated in 1870 by Thomas Henry Huxley, as we have discussed earlier in this tutorial. Now, probably with this information, you can get a fair idea that how the concept of spontaneous generation was developed and how the words biogenesis and abiogenesis were originated. Alright, now in order to understand the concept of biogenesis versus abiogenesis, let us analyze these two terms in the light of history and logical facts so that a better comparison and conclusion can be drawn. Now, as we have discussed earlier in this tutorial that ancient Greek believed that goddess Gaia, who is also known as Mother Earth, could make life arise from stones spontaneously which is known as the process of generatio spontanea. Now, this concept of generatio spontanea was tied up with scientific and logical reasons as well. Therefore, not only from religious point of view, but scientifically and logically this concept was strongly believed until the 16th century. Now, as the history states that 16th century was the time when many scholars were engaged to explore various branches of science, 
and especially extensive contributions were being made in the branch of biology. So these advancements in the science led to the formation of two groups of proponents with regards to abiogenesis and biogenesis. One group of scholars who proposed abiogenesis or spontaneous generation and the other group of scholars who began to negate abiogenesis and began to propose or support the Italian phrase which is omne vivium exiovo which means all life is from life. In history we see William Harvey among the earliest proponents of biogenesis and this is we are talking about somewhere in the beginning of 17th century where William Harvey proposed all life beginning from egg which is based on omne vivium exiovo which means all life is from life. Now later in the 17th century we see another strong proponent of biogenesis, an Italian physician by the name of Francesco Redi. Francesco Redi performed various experiments to demonstrate that life generates from life, and this was somewhere in 1668. Francesco Redi performed various experiments to demonstrate that life generates from life and that it does not generate spontaneously. And these experiments were performed somewhere in 1668. But the proponents of abiogenesis strongly criticized his experiments and continued to support abiogenesis. The history marks this period as the period of heated debates between proponents of abiogenesis and the proponents of biogenesis. And even though many experiments were carried out, many discussions and debates took place, but the proponents of abiogenesis held a very strong position, and this position stood firm until the 19th century. There are many names of biologists and physicians in the history who performed various experiments either to propose abiogenesis or to propose biogenesis. Now, in the 19th century, somewhere in 1864, Louis Pasteur performed an experiment using a Swan-esque flask. Louis Pasteur was a French biologist and he was also a proponent of biogenesis. What he actually did was that he continued the series of experiments performed by John Needham and Lazarus Palanzani. We will be talking about these experiments in the forthcoming tutorials. And for now, it should be enough to say that Louis Pasteur performed this experiment and his results were summarized as Omni Vivium Exiovo. And after this result, Louis Pasteur stated that spontaneous generation is a dream. Now, in the light of science, we all know that when the earth had evolved, there was no life on earth. And now, according to Louis Pasteur's statement, that all life is generated from life, and hence spontaneous generation is a dream. A question that arises is, that if all life comes from life, and keeping in mind that there was no life on earth at the time of evolution, where or how did the life start on earth? So, keeping this scenario in mind, a conclusion can be drawn that either abiogenesis or biogenesis, both of these concepts cannot be negated. Now, in order to explore the generation of life on earth, another concept is being looked at in the light of chemical and organic evolution. We will be talking about this topic in the forthcoming tutorials as the time for this tutorial is reaching to its end. We hope that this tutorial will be informative and beneficial for you. And if you like this tutorial, then we certainly deserve your hit on the like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified of our new uploads. Okay, bye for now and we'll see you in the next tutorial.